In today's video, what I want to take a look at is how to uh, control the execution of a process using the SIG CONT and SIG STOP signals. Now, you remember this structure, I think. This is where we just uh, fork a process. We check if the fork succeeded. And then in here, we add the code for the child process. And in here, we wait for the child process inside the parent process. Um, before, in the previous lesson, we had a while loop. And I'm gonna actually add this while loop back in here. So I'm gonna have here printf, uh, some output, let's say. And we're gonna still use sleep for 50 milliseconds. Um, and that's all the process is going to do. It's never gonna actually finish the execution because it's an infinite loop, it's while one, and it's just gonna print, 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 print forever. But I want to actually control whether or not it uh, executes using the parent process, using signals. Now, first, to make sure that the process actually finishes its execution somehow, uh, I'm gonna call kill of the child's process ID and seek kill. Right, out, right before waiting for it to terminate. And in here, we're gonna add our code where we use seek content, seek stop. So right now it's just going to straight up start and stop just because we're sending the signal to kill itself and never print anything because it doesn't wait. If we, of course, if we sleep like we did before for one second, it is going to do something. Just print some output on the screen for one second and then it's gonna stop. What I want to do is create a program that what it does is it prompts me to give a number of seconds, right? So let's say I give it five seconds, and from then on, the child process starts executing for exactly five seconds. And after those five seconds have elapsed, it stops. Stops ex executing doesn't necessarily kill or terminate uh, its process, it's just kind of going to stop execution and I get another prompt to actually give it another uh, input of seconds and uh, have it execute for another set of seconds. Now, how do we do that? First, what I want to show you is how you can stop the process. Just straight up stop it for whatever, however many seconds we can uh, stop it for. So I'm gonna, uh, remember this code right now, it prints for a second on the console. But if I call, if I call the kill function, that again, doesn't necessarily terminate the process that we're sending the signal to, it just kind of sends the signal. Uh, if I send to the child process, the sig stop signal, not the sig kill signal, you will notice something very interesting. If I try to launch this, you will notice that nothing is printed on the console. As you can see down here, nothing is printed on the console because well, what happens is this child is created, it tries to execute, but then the parent uh, process comes in and sends the six stop command and says, okay, you're gonna stop executing right here and it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna stand there at the line of code that it was currently at, probably in, at the beginning here at uh, the while instruction or something like that and it we wait a second and then we kill the actual process so in turn the process doesn't really do anything how about we stop it right we wait one second and then we let it continue its execution so we can actually do that if we call kill again with the sig cont signal so i'm going to send the sig cont signal to our uh, child process and again sleep for one second and let it execute for one second guess what's gonna happen if I try to launch this you'll notice that for one second nothing happens and then for another second some output gets printed on the screen and this is uh, 20 lines of text every second so this is why we're getting so many but we are actually waiting for one second right at the beginning you can see it again doesn't do anything and now it starts outputting and then it stops Okay, so this way we can actually control whether or not that child process executes or not. Now let's try to put this into practice. To do so, we're going to have to use, well, a simple do while loop, I think. It's the best uh, way to actually do this. We're going to actually initialize here an int t for time. And in here, we're going to store the number of seconds we get from the user. And I'm going to execute this do while loop as long as we have t 
higher than zero. Okay, so if we give it a negative number or a zero, then it should uh, just exit out, kill the child process because remember it's still going to be stopped or it's just going to be stuck in an infinite loop. It's never going to actually finish its execution and uh, also wait for it to terminate and finish the process group. Now, in this do I loop, what we have to do is first let's print out a message saying something like printf um, number or time in seconds for execution. Okay, and then scanf percent d and then the address of t. That's where I want to store it. So in t we're going to have the, let's say, five seconds we read from the user. And in here, what we should do is, well, before we start, we should actually stop the execution of the child process. We don't want it to print while we have this uh, message on the screen because then it's just gonna go, like it's gonna print this message and then the child process is gonna start printing out some output. And it's gonna be quite uh, out of clutter and we won't understand what's going on. So beforehand, we're actually gonna stop this process from executing. I'm gonna say uh, kill process ID and seek stop right before we do anything in here. Okay, so we know that the child process doesn't do anything. Now in the do while loop, what I want to do once I have the seconds, I'm gonna check if the seconds are higher than zero in here as well, so that I don't do something very bad and uh, wait for negative one seconds, that would be a pretty bad idea. And in here, I'm going to first, well, we know that the process is stopped. So we're gonna first send the seek count uh, signal to actually start its execution. That's the first step. So I'm going to say here uh, kill of process ID and sig cont. That's the first step. Next up, we're going to wait. Well, we should just wait that those t seconds that we gave it. And here, I mean, here's why I mean uh, you should actually never wait for negative one seconds because this is an unsigned int. And uh, if you actually read the negative one into this, you are going to wait for basically max int seconds. And that's a really, really long time. Um, so this is why I'm checking if t is higher than zero. Now, sleep of t is gonna wait those five seconds or three seconds or however many we give it. After it's been waiting during the this during this sleep in the parent, the child process is gonna start outputting stuff on the screen. So then after we finished with the sleep command, we're gonna actually send in the seek stop so that the next time the while loop comes around, we are in the same situation where the process is stopped, we get that prompt and we can actually type it in without having too much clutter on the screen. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say here, kill of PID seek stop after it. And I'm gonna remove this spacing and really that's about it. If I try to, well, if I first remove these lines and only have, so once the once we give it, for example, zero here, it's gonna get out of the do while loop and it's just gonna kill the process, the child process. If I try to launch this now, you're gonna notice that first we don't get anything printed on the screen from the child process. We don't get this text on this text on the screen. If I give it, uh, let's say one here, so one second of execution and hit enter, you'll notice that it starts printing on the screen. So uh, the while loop started re-executing again. And after one second, it stopped, right? It stopped not because of some condition in here in the child process, but because we sent a signal to it to actually stop execution. This is the, this is the interesting part that you don't have to actually implement code inside the process you want to stop. You simply send the signal and it's going to automatically stop. And uh, now we can give it, let's say, I don't know, five seconds. So we can just wait five seconds here. I hope uh, this actually works properly. And voila, we get five seconds of execution and now we get uh, the prompt again. So every time we, uh, give it a prompt, it's gonna start execution again. And after the number of seconds we gave it, it's going to actually stop again. So if I give it zero seconds, it's going to, well, it's gonna get out of this while, the while loop 
and kill the child process and then it's going to wait for it to terminate so that it doesn't remain there taking up uh, precious resources and of course it's gonna stop execution of the parent afterwards now how could this be useful well the key thing here is this while loop this while loop is sort of for me at least it's a placeholder for something more high level let's say it is a uh, listener for some sort of requests from a web server or something like that and it continues continues listening for data and at one point you want to just pause its execution so that it does no longer listen for anything and then you can do your stuff where you i don't know just change a couple things here and there and then you start its execution again programmatically i mean and uh, this is was this was really more of a demonstration of what you can do with signals right this is i think this is very powerful uh tool to actually control processes and that's about it for this video i hope you got something out of this video and if you do have any questions do leave them down in the comments below or on our discord server take care bye